I'm continuing on measuring and uh, in this case I've selected just a pair of old milling cutters as um, precision pins they are um, 7.91, This is consistently thinner but as long as I use it in the same spot should be good um, of course I can take some real precision pins also but I, for this measurement with this uh, digital caliper I I think I'll get her if I get a reading plus minus 100s I'll be uh, I'm okay and that's only to see like uh, broadly where I am and uh, <clears throat> you need to have pins that that suits the dovetails in question so my pins here now they are like um, going in halfway or two-thirds I suppose if I had bigger pins like this they would go in all the way so it wouldn't be that suitable. So I'm taking readings and comparing them in three places. Start up here. So my smallest reading is 45.37. Okay. Uh, it fluctuates between 38 actually and 36 so call that even also at least to the degree the accuracy of this measurement method it is practically zero Same here, uh, it, fl it fluctuated to 30, between 36 and 38. Um, at least what it's telling me is that this is not heavily worn. Um, so I will blew it up also to confirm that. By uh, means of that I can see if it's uh, hollow or high in the middle. We get another reading and, and proof of that. Okay, this is the same measurement on the mating part and um, <clears throat> just illustrate the usual problem with using a micrometer at least as I see it is that you, you won't get down because take one pin here and just illustrate The micrometer won't reach down enough, the deep down enough, you see, it always meets there. That's why I think it's better actually to use a caliper that goes all the way down like that. Here I'm in. <coughs> So let's find out measurements correspond. So it's seventy ninety two zero. And it's 
it's zero. And it's point 0.1. That's within uh, point 0.1. It's within the tolerance, I think, of the measurement, actually. Do that once more. Now it's zero. So, so all in all, not worn at all. It's a little bit of a... You can hear, it's actually as it is milled. Uh, and the top surface here, I would suspect, should be smooth so as not to invite dirt um, anyhow there's a small small line there which probably has been has been a damage a chip that has um, or some grit that has plowed off a line there And it's possible to to lodge a screwdriver in there. I don't know if you can see that, but so and on the other side, it's so okay the Gibbs side. So um, uh, since it's not worn, just this ridge, I think I'll just scrape uh, flat down. These ways also. So now it looks and uh, feels much better, smoother. But is it flat? <clears throat> Not according to the bluing. See here? It's just touching on the sides. Um, I doubt it's much, but still, it has to go around of. Um, series of scraping cycles to get it within. And the other bluing was made with um, the table in place, but uh, just to check that we have got the right reading. So we hinge it. And conf can confirm it is Touching just on the corners, so those four corners. So, a bit of scraping to do. I've been switching to using the Biax. This is how it will look like if you go for area scraping with circles or just primarily area scraping. You will, of course, do this while you're roughing in, so to speak, even though this was just semi roughing. Um, I did this because. Even though you get a nice cross hatch pattern with the hand scraping, and then, uh, and then if you find yourself like I did with just the outer areas marked, forget about it. Just go back so you cover everything. So um, I'm more or less there now. So then you can go for pinpointing and um, and more like uh, making a pattern, at least beautifying it. However, this is the flat. The exposed sides. I want this to be as, uh, let's say, as uh, equal to ground or, or smooth as possible. While on the other side, on the table, I will then make uh, the divots needed. So I'm hitting about all over now. Also in into the pockets. I did one thing then. Also, this time I uh, uh, made this a groove here. Not certain if it's so visible on this one. It was also a little bit harder. This uh, iron is a bit harder than on the Myford. <laughs> Hate to say it, guys, but that's how it is. But anyway, um, flatness is now okay. And I will go for a finish. Now over at the small bluing table, or the surface plate, granite surface plate, I have um, applied some blue, wiped it off, uh, done the same on the 
on the device on the test, so to speak, which is now the table. And I will apply it to the run plate, listen to the noise, like hollow, meaning that when you there's no grit inside here, underneath. Wiggle it about so that I can see where it hinges, pivots. Important because there is if there is a grain of dirt underneath here, you'll see that it sticks to this side. Also, you can feel a little bit diff if you can feel a little bit difference, it will be readable, so to speak, in the print underneath. Pretty certain. So I'm a bit into the finishing cycle now and as you can see uh, the coverage is improving to the degree that I'll take it closer that I'm beginning to be satisfied actually it was a little bit li more over here than I thought now around the holes but and uh, I'm still, as I've been fighting a little bit shy over here. Uh, otherwise, it's coming along nicely. So, um, it's okay as a, let's say, in the middle. So, I will prove that by scraping. So, a little further in, nearing the completion. Now, it gets very sticky when you rub it on the plate. And it hinges okay. And I expect it to be quite okay. I use canode now, so and a quite quite thin layer. And when we're looking at the plate now, it's Quite okay, not perfect, but but at least coverage is okay. I can get it to where I'm dividing the points more, of course, by um, adjusting. I'm using bias, adjusting the stroke uh, length shorter. I'm also using a narrow blade. I'm not sure if I need to do it a little bit. Let's move it over here to a little bit different lighting. So now I'm applying the yellow canode as a highlighter. So I, it takes the glare away. From the surface so it's becoming matte at least we say that in Europe matte and you can wipe it quite a lot of the of it off again and the nice thing about this is that it's water-based so it you can get it off with soap and water that's the nice thing about canode and um, I will see how it rubs now to see the if it's better than just blue. And um, it's quite thin layer, as I said. I use a hard brayer to apply now. So I go back and forth from between these, but it doesn't matter really. What matters is that you feel for grit, dirt. So. So there's nothing the same here. And then you drop it down carefully. Listen for that closed sound. Wiggle it or hinge it. It almost immediately sucks down because of the flatness. Move it around also if you like. 
and you can also see the imprint on the on the plate if you if you need to or want to so now we can decide whether or not this is better you can see it's a little bit better see what you mean You also see there's a little less here on the inner side and also here. I'm also spotting the ways. Um, in this case I used it maybe the other way but at least I will get an imprint on the lower side here I used it the wrong way also it should be the other way with this one turn around but anyway should give us a liberal blue give us an indication And as you can see, a mm, liberal blue, uh, quite flat apart from here. So I'll take this down a little bit more. It's not touching here. That is also evident. If you look closer on this one, as you can see, it's not been touching over here. see you can, you can inspect the plate that in this case was the, the table used as a reference and I can see that it wasn't touching there so I've been too I've been taking off too much material on the inside so I'll have to take it down a little bit more so that this will also come in one more Oh, I see. I have a long way to go. At least some. That's improving. So I, I gain that again, regain that, so to speak, but still have this area, which is too low. So I'm nearing at least total flatness. Still have a little bit there and here, apparently. So, um, but you know, might call today soon.